What's happening people, Dan Lawless here, West Ham Fan TV, outside the London Stadium. The first time I'm seeing it with my own eyes in six months, pretty much. And it feels, it's a bit surreal, you know, it's a bit weird um, after all this time. So, it'll be a probably long time before I'm inside that stadium, I reckon. But, yeah, so, thought I'd do a little, little transfer update video as I'm here. To actually do a video where I'm not sitting in front of the webcam. I miss these, you know, getting out and about and being on location and filming stuff, you know. Everything's the same in the webcam, webcam, webcam. So I thought I'd come here and talk a little bit of transfer updates. Uh, not much, obviously, especially in the way of signing players. Um, in fact, it looks like we've missed out on a player. Um, Eze from QPR. It's looking like Crystal Palace are going to wrap that up. And... Um, yeah, really disappointing. It looks like they're close. I mean, though we did hear about a month ago that they was good, that they was close to signing him, and then it looked like we was in the run in. So, and I think Jared Bowen was one that Crystal Palace were close to signing. So you don't know. It's not over till it's over. The, the thing is with me about this as thing, he does look a quality player, and and if he's got that creativity, we do need that. We do need someone who can create more chances because, you know, as the as as much wingers and all that we've got in terms of actually creating clear cut chances, we don't seem to do that enough. But it's it's a tricky one for me. We know we need a left back. Bad priority number one. Um, could probably do with a right back like Fredericks. You can't. He's, he's injured too much. I like Ben Johnson, but we need that depth, um, and we need a striker. So if we was to actually not get a midfielder, I mean he could turn out to be a brilliant player. However, with the players that we've got. You know, you've got Antonio, you've got Jared Bowen, um, we've got Yarmolenko, don't know what's going to happen with him, but we've got obviously Dean Garner back, we'll talk a little bit more about Dean Garner, um, Snodgrass, Snodgrass is a squad player, um, Anderson, Lanzini, like, it's really not a priority area, it's, again, it's disappointing that, you know, we can't just go in straight and get him and then look at other areas, but... Like, for me, I'd rather look to play Anderson in that middle role, which he looked good playing just behind. Um, probably going to flip in silhouette now with that sun's come out. But, um, yeah, no, I like that idea of just playing Anderson just in behind uh, Allaire, which I didn't get to see the Ipswich game, but it sounded like it worked, it worked out really well with Dean Garner on the wing, who linked up, you know, wonderfully with um, Allaire. Um, I'm not as disappointed, really, missing out on him. But the problem is, and, you know, some of the the reports are coming out this saying, oh, yeah, we're, we're just focusing more on, you know, other areas, our defence, and these, this, 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 this is why we ain't going for him. That's all well and good, but I don't think there's been any movements there whatsoever. We keep hearing this sell-to-buy crap, um, and apparently they're focusing more on selling players at the moment than buying players. But, again, you're selling players for, for nothing. So how, what are we going to buy with the, you know, how low you're selling players for? You know, we want to focus be on, on adding to the squad and improving it. Really, I don't want to start selling attacking players to buy defenders. You know, and then you just weaken in one area to strengthen another area. And again, we've sold two strikers. We need another striker. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I do like, I do like what I see sort of in terms of how that's how the system play moving and in the middle i've been saying that we said that on the show the other day that's the way to go you've got bowen and dean garner you know and, and lanzini looked good lanzini looked good who knows maybe now lanzini we could, he could start to get a bit of that form back um you know a lot of us wrote him off but i mean it's pre-season that you can't really take too much on it but you know if we're not going to get decent money for him there's no point there's no point in selling players for the sake of selling them to be honest we've cleared a lot of money off the wage bill and I would rather, let's just see us add to what we've got at the back. There's obviously a few players that probably are surplus to requirements, but like even Masuaku looked good. He's someone you could play on the wing. You know, so we've got options on the wing, uh, you know, in terms of attacking midfield and wing and things like that. Um, speaking of, you know, obviously Dean Garner apparently uh, reports in an uh, online coming out of certain tabloids saying that he wants assurances um, that he'll get first team football if he's going to stay um, which is an interesting one I mean that always rubs me up a little bit the wrong way look take it with a pinch of salt by the way um, but it always rubs me up the wrong way a little bit when I hear that because it's like you can't guarantee that you've got to earn it basically but the guarantee that you'll get a chance 
Um, but to be fair to, the, to him, like he's just had a really good season at West Brom. And I reckon that's put him in a difficult predicament. The fans obviously love him there. You know, Slavin Bilic, I imagine he's got a really good relationship with him. He's built up and other players. So he's a difficult, he's got a difficult choice to make now. I mean, he's, he's under contract as our player. He's still our player, he's still under contract. But in terms of, he can obviously put in a transfer request in terms of where he wants to go. And I think he just probably wants to know that he's got a shot, you know, that he's, he, he's not going to be like before he left. and. Uh, where he was sort of in and out the team and he weren't really considered. He wants to be, you know, a big part of the plans. And I think he should be. He should be a big part of the squad. Not to say you're guaranteed going to start every game, but if you perform, like, listen, you're going to be part of that first team. You know, so, I mean, what a performance he had. And the way he linked up with Alir, that could be the, the, the missing piece, the missing link that we needed for, for Alir. And they, if they can build a partnership and understand him, then that's great. I mean, he's definitely a baller, like... Unreal, unreal looking, and this could be a big season for him. So, whatever they need to do is just keep him at the club. Like, if we sell him, honestly, I'll be livid. I'll be absolutely livid if we sell him. He was one of the best players in the championship. We're looking at signing championship players. We've already got one who was one of the best players in the championship last season and has Premier League experience. So, I mean, he that he would be worth, you know, a lot of money. So. To sell him, no chance. We've got to keep him. I know, I know West Brom are trying to explore the option. They really want him. Um, and I think uh, a few other players are, are interested. I heard something like Ajax or something. Like, no, it's got to be a no-go. Like him and Rice, like, don't sell it. It's not sell I promise the young players. Like, Moyes wants to build a young squad. And we've got to see a lot of other young players like Baptiste. And, uh, and you know, if we can build for the future, uh, it's that's, that's what you need. That's where... You know, as a club, we can really grow. You know, and it's hard to imagine growing or doing anything under this board. But you know, if you if you build, sort of, you know, for, grow from the academy a good group of players, then if you're going to have a good team. And then some players that leave, you know, it brings in a lot of money either way. So business sense and footballing sense. It, you know, we can't be selling our youth, our promising hungry young players. So keep him at the club. I think he's going to be good. Um, yeah, and then, like I said, look, Rico Henry, go out for him. Like, let's let's get our defence sorted. Let's build that up. Look, that's still the area we need to be looking at. Um, yeah, and a striker. So, it's still looking slow, still frustrating. Bloody hell. They're building something, by the way, around here. I don't know what they're building. So, you know, that walk, usually it was just empty. Now they're building something around here. So, look, over there as well. Don't know what they're building but yes so still slow still hoping we get something concrete make some movements but again if it's sell to buy there are no movements on selling players really frustrating like we, it's promising from what we see in the preseason two teams split up across two games and we scored you know nine goals between two games with the two different squads you know so each one it wasn't like the full strength squad so you know, Josh Cullum was back and, and all these. So we've seen that we've got something there. We've got some good players there. We just need to strengthen those weakest areas. And we need that that cover because we know what we're like with injuries. Um, so let's see. Let's see. He's got a job on his hands, Moyes. He really has got a job on his hands. And then that start hasn't helped because, again, people are saying, oh, fixtures don't matter. Like, it's, you know, if, if we do want to start to get, get bring those young players in, that's a hard... You know, if you talk about throwing in the deep end, you know, for those young players, and 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 is he going to be able to trust them? Is it, you know, what he's like? I don't trust this player in this scenario. Is he going to want to bring in those young players in such big games? Um, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's good for those big games because the expectation isn't there. Obviously, you've seen players flourish like Bruce Oxford did against Arsenal, and you know, Rice has so many times. So, anyway, we'll see. We'll see. So, let me know what you guys think. Um, what do you guys think about Dean Garner? Um, you know, should we be doing all we can to make him stay? Um, to keep him to stay? And do you think we've missed a trip with Eze, or do you think we're right in the midfield? Let me know. More stuff coming. Come on, you irons.